get started. I want you to hear the words of this song. If you were here Wednesday night, you got to hear it. And uh, I don't think you'll complain about hearing it again. I just want you to relax and listen to the words of this song, especially in light of everything that you see on, on news and social media throughout the week. Uh, focus on the words of this song, please. Just, just listen. Just take it in.
Amen. 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 You ready for that? Yes. I sure hope so, folks. I sure hope so, because it's coming. It's coming. Amen. The signs of the times. It's coming. Stand with me, please. Let's go to the throne as we pray. Heavenly Father, what a privilege it is to be here today, gathered together in this building. Your body has assembled to worship you, to glorify you. Father, what a promise. What a glorious thing to look forward to, the rapture of the church. I pray that we would be focused and continually watching you and looking earnestly, as we learned about Wednesday night, earnestly waiting and looking for you. Father, may we be collectively uh, worshiping you, serving in unity as the body of Christ. May our, con may our community know that this congregation is um, surrendered and, and sold out to the gospel and to Jesus Christ. May we be uh, your mouthpiece in this world, in this community. And may you be honored, Lord, by our time together today in Jesus' name. You remain standing if you don't mind. Let's sing a song together. Through it all, if you know the words, sing it. Uh, just sing along wherever you know the words. Think about what we're singing, okay?
to bear, what a privilege to carry everything, everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Okay? So today's our opportunity to say, God, I've been carrying this around for a while. It's been on my mind, my heart. It's something that's weighing me down. It's like a backpack we carry around with us all the time. And Lord, I'm just going to lay it at your feet right here at the foot of the cross and give it to you because it's 
Scripture says to just give it to you so I can have that peace and that joy no matter what. In the lion's den, in the midst of the fire, whatever. On the mountaintop, joy comes from the Lord and he inhabits, lives within the praises of his people. The praises of his people. So we're going to sing this song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, and we're going to sing it a little slower than normal. So your brain will remember the words a little bit better because we get so familiar with songs, sometimes we just sing it and we don't think about what it actually said. So let's sing this together, What a Friend. And if you if you would stand, that would be great. You don't have to, but if you can, that would be wonderful. <laughs>
Okay, so pray, continue to pray for Mrs. Clark and all those around her that are involved in, in caregiving. Ms. Rita Eaton uh, is having an uh, MRI tomorrow or Tuesday. I, I forget. Uh, oh, hey, Rita. Uh, here, Tuesday. Thank you, Rita. Tuesday. So pray for Rita. Uh, so uh, she's been having a lot of dizzy spells and, and makes her sick. And so pray for Rita and George as well. Uh, also, a uh, friend of mine, Todd Jones, pray for Todd. Uh, please put him on your prayer list if you haven't already. And Johnny Mir, Miss Patricia's daughter, Johnny Mir, has terminal cancer as well. And she's going to be coming to stay with, with Jack and Patricia. Uh, Charles Baker, is Candy's dad. Charles Baker, uh, Judy, how's your back? You here? So that's. Okay, good, good. James didn't didn't do anything to hinder that, did he? <laughs> okay, all right. Good to see you back. <laughs> good to see you back, Judy. All right, um, Roger Coons. Roger Coons. Um, there was a, an accident uh, two nights ago. Ryan Miss you and Lane Rogers. I don't know if y'all saw that or heard about that. Pray for them and their families. Um, I don't know about Lane. I, I know Ryan was in pretty serious condition. Anybody has an update? Let me know. Okay, down at Grand Street. Okay, thank you. They're young, young fellows. Yes, this is one of Cameron Junior's friends. So yeah. And put Laura Haruska back on your prayer list, please, by her request. Laura Haruska. Also, Tommy Clark, who is my brother-in-law, my older sister's uh, husband, he is preaching this morning at a church down in Florida, and uh, so we, we need to be praying for him uh, this morning, Tommy Clark. So appreciate you remember these folks in prayer uh, as we continue to lift them up to the throne each day of the week. Um, all right. Um, where's Brother Joe? There you are. I'm going to ask Joe if you come on up. He's going to pray for our nation. Somebody pray for our community this morning. Somebody willing to do that? I know that coming up here is intimidating. I understand that. Anybody willing to do that? We won't throw anything at you. And we would certainly appreciate the prayer. Thank you, Calvin. Yes, sir. Come on up and pray for our community. That would be, that'd be wonderful. Joe's going to pray for our nation. And as he prays, um, pray with him. Um, and then Calvin's going to pray for our community. They're going to pray for Calvin, as soon as he finishes, you just go right ahead. Thank you, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Before I pray for our nation, I'd like to share a little something that happened this morning to me. What you don't know is that Jack and Dan and myself have a little project going, and we know that there are people out there in the world that are hurting, they're suffering, some are heartbroken, some have no one, no one to turn to. Some of them have no one to talk to. Some are hopeless. And because we know that, we decided to start a project to contact them. And I was a little bit concerned this morning, a little bit kind of stressed because this is something we want to do. And, and as I was stressing out over it, I heard the little voice in my head. I didn't hear it verbally, but it was there. And that voice said this, this is not about you. That got my attention. And I realized God is still in control. 
and it's not about us. And the little boy said to me, all you have to do is do what you're told. I mean, I thought, I don't like being home. <laughs> and uh, I apologize already. <laughs> anyway. Please bow your head for a prayer for our country. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you and we praise you. We thank you for a country that we're allowed to praise you and pray to you openly and freely. We pray today for our country's president, vice president, and all elected officials of this great country. We pray that you would arm them with wisdom and may they make decisions that would honor and glorify you. We stand on your promise made in 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Lord, we stand on that promise and we seek your face and ask in Jesus' name, that you heal our land. Our prayer is that we see with your eyes and hear with your ears that everything we say and do would glorify you. May we be the light that shines in the darkness and may we love others with your love so others may not see us, but would see your love through us. We thank you for giving us your Son and salvation through Jesus' blood and, re and uh, resurrection. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come to you this morning, Lord, with humble and grateful hearts, God, as we gather in this beautiful sanctuary this morning, cool and no bugs biting on us and just a warm, a comfortable temperature, God, we just thank you for this, this wonderful building that we can gather in and be comfortable. And Lord, this morning we just want to worship you. We want to praise you. And then, God, we want to beg for your forgiveness. Lord, we've sinned and we've fallen short on so many things and so many issues. God, I pray that, that you will just forgive us. Lord, that you'll set us free and that you'll heal us and that you'll restore us, Lord, to, a, to, a, to that perfect relationship with your son, Jesus. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you for sending him to that cross. We don't understand it. I don't pretend to understand all that went into that. Lord, but I just thank you and praise you that you saw fit to send your son to that cross to, to die for a sinner like me. 
And then, Lord, not only that, not only to, to save me and to provide salvation and, and know with the security that I'm going to, to, to heaven one day and to live with you, but, Lord, that I can walk with you in a personal relationship and friendship with you right now here on this earth, this day. Oh, God, thank you. What a privilege that is. And, Lord, now as we, as we pray for our community, Father, thank you that we're opening the doors of our building. We're opening the doors of our businesses, of our churches, so that people can come in again. God, I pray that you'll open the doors of our hearts. Amen. That we'll be able, that we'll, we'll let people into our heart, not only into our buildings, but Lord, into our hearts. Lord, I pray that this congregation, this family, this called Homewood Baptist Church and the Homewood community, I pray, Father, that we'll just open the doors of our hearts, swing them right wide open. If that happens, it'll be because you do a miracle. Lord, that you'll do a miracle and that you'll change us. Change us from the inside out. And God, make us a little more like your son, Jesus little less what the world teaches us to be. Father, we just look forward to what you're going to do in our hearts, in our lives, in our families, in our churches, in our communities, in our country, and in our world. And Father, may all of us, may we, as this happens, God, don't let us get caught up and think that our Get caught up in the idea that a president or a government or anything fixed it. Lord, you must, we depend on you to do that miracle. And only you. And we'll give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, friends. All right. Resurrection morning, we introduce the song and ask the question. And when you first hear it, you think, how in the world could you ask the question like that? Is he worthy? Is he worthy? It, the question is not, is he really worthy according to you know, reality? But the question is, is he worthy in your heart and my heart? And what if we come to the point in our lives to where he is worthy of our praise and honor. And then the song says, hey, there's nobody, there's nobody that can open the scroll. There's nobody worthy of being that perfect, holy lamb except Jesus Christ. And he did what he did because of the love that he has for you and me and because he wanted to glorify the Father. Okay. We're going to sing this song together. Is he worthy? And it's it's a, a question answer type song. So we give you a question and you answer. Okay? And you'll see how to do that in just a second. So let's stand and sing. <coughs> Is the glory of the Lord to be the light? 
that our community and our nation's in an upheaval. Um, the question is what we do as believers in the midst of all this. Does it change our, our, our marching orders? Does it change how we live life? Should it change how we live life? Or should it affect us in one way or the other? Those are good questions. And maybe some that you've asked this week and come to a resolve on one way or the other. Children, how many children we got in here? You qualify as a child, raise your hand. <laughs> All right. Any children learn anything this week from the television that you didn't know before? Anybody learn anything from the television you didn't know before? 
Now, I know y'all are not this quiet in the class back there, or in children's church. All right. Any, any adults, you learned something new from television this week? How about social media? Ooh. <laughs> we need a lot more prayer. We need a lot more prayer. Yeah. You, uh, one of the things, uh, social media, yes, sir. I did, Steve. I learned something from social media. What? Yes, sir. They said that we worship sports. All right. So God eliminated the sports ring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Um, learned that uh, we worship um, music. Mm -hmm. and, you know, music. And so we eliminated the civic center mm -hmm. in, in there. Said we worship uh, our money. So God done away with the economy and the stock market, you know, crashed or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then it went on to say that maybe, maybe we like Job's pray, maybe we need to humble ourselves and turn back to look at the real God. Yeah. The true mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you, Calvin. Yeah. God is still on the throne. Sometimes we forget that. So he does remind us. His children need a reminder from time to time. <laughs> you ever had that conversation with your child or remember having that conversation with your parents or guardians when you were young? I'm still the parent here. <laughs> All right. And sometimes God does that in his own way. And it's needed. Um, I've been troubled this week, as most of you have, for different reasons. And don't make an assumption there. But for different reasons, and I uh, struggled with it. Matter of fact, I had an old sermon prepared. I've got a sheet here with um, about, I don't know, say 20 scriptures for a different sermon. <laughs> so uh, I didn't make it to you today, but that's what was on my mind most of the week. And uh, I'll share some of that with you later at a later time. But. Um, it's tough to know what to say and what to do. Uh, we have uh, a couple churches in the, in the local, in our community that have um, been closed due to the coronavirus and um, are closed themselves. I don't really know, I think they closed themselves. Uh, we have a lot of unrest still from COVID-19. I had text Barbara this week a couple times about the virus. She said, our, some of our sickest patients come from church uh, uh, situations and church gatherings where uh, people have come together and just went back to normal um, like it used to be. And that's why I keep doing those mass announcements to you and let you know we need to wear a mask if nothing else out of respect for one another. Uh, there are three congregations that I know of that are, have shut down and somebody told me about that because they gather together um, for a revival or some kind of, of service. And now the COVID-19 is spreading uh, among their congregations. So we have to be very careful. And I appreciate your respect and being mindful of, of the, the few rules that we have for right now, wearing those masks and so forth. And I went in the wrong door before the worship service. Did anybody notice that? <laughs> I passed Miss Angela. She was coming out the right door and I was going in the wrong door. I thought, I'm not supposed to be this close to people. That, that's why. It's, it's out of respect. If Patricia was here, I'd be in deep trouble. I'd have to go back through that door. But anyway, I, and I, I mentioned to somebody this week, was thinking again, folks, we, we're in an air-conditioned room. We're in comfortable chairs. Uh, if a mask is, is that much of a hindrance to us, we got other problems. So um, wear a mask. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, and I mentioned this last Sunday. Our brothers and sisters all over the world are worshiping God under trees for three and four hours out in the heat, uh, shoved in, 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 in basements, whispering the gospel because they can't speak the Lord's name out loud. Uh, you got a hundred people. I've seen some of the pictures. You got a hundred people in a room the size of a classroom back here. And they're whispering, and they can't sing out loud, so they're whispering the words to the songs because it's illegal. If they get caught, they can lose their lives. And they're just as happy and joyous as they can be. And we're complaining about wearing a mask in an air-conditioned room when there's only like 60 people in this room that can hold over 200. So sometimes we have a reality check. 
Lord, forgive me for being such a brat. That's what I am sometimes, and maybe you can identify with that. I don't know. All right. I want to share this with you. This is from a calendar uh, devotional this, this week, a couple days ago. James did not say, count it all joy when you fall into the easy chair. Okay? He said, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. That's in James 1 and 2. Joy is not the same as happiness, although they may overlap. Happiness depends on circumstances. Joy depends on God. Happiness vanishes just when life turns painful. Joy keeps going and may even grow. Joy comes from a living, vital relationship with God. It comes from knowing this world is only temporary, and someday we will be with God forever. It comes from a life of submission to the Holy Spirit, regardless of circumstances. It isn't that time. Submission to the Holy Spirit, and that's something that we don't talk about a whole lot, but it's something that we that is certainly needed. Uh, very few people actually enjoy accountability and submission, um, but all believers have to have both submission to Christ and accountability to Him for our lives. I want you to go to, to Luke chapter twenty-one. Luke chapter twenty-one. And in this, there's a couple things. And if you need, if you're taking notes or want a title for today, Jesus says, focus on me. Jesus says, focus on me. All right. Y'all get distracted in life sometimes? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do y'all get distracted driving sometimes? Yeah. Does your spouse get distracted driving sometimes? Oh, <laughs> there was a lot more exuberance in that one all the time. Growing up, my grandparents uh, used to ride in the back. I used to ride in the back seat. My grandfather would drive. And my grandmother would say, Pappy, watch the road. Pappy, watch the road. Because if he saw something, he wanted want to watch. It didn't matter that he was driving. He, he drove like this. <laughs> and we would go like that in the car, you know, back and forth. We need blinders. We need blinders. You, you ever wonder why horses wear those blinders when they're racing? So they don't see the other horses, so they just focus. We need that. We need Jesus' blinders, so we focus on Him. Part of the sermon I was going to share with you comes from uh, a story that we've talked about several times when Jesus walked on the water. Remember? And Peter started to sink. He's the only one guy out of the boat. He starts to sink and he starts looking around and he gets distracted. Jesus pulls him out. I want you to think about that. We'll, we'll touch that some other day. But I want you to think about the sea that Peter started to sink into as the sea of humanity that we live in. And a lot of times in Scripture, especially in the Revelation, sea is a metaphor for humanity. Okay? And a lot of times in Scripture, water is a good thing, like living water. The Holy Spirit represents water in some ways. Baptism. Uh, water is life. Also in Scripture, water is death. Back to Noah in Genesis 7, uh, where water drowns, water destroys, so it can be both. But in the story where Peter is sinking, I want you to think about that as the sea of humanity. And Peter began to be absorbed by that sea when he took his focus off of the Lord, who was standing above the sea, on it, not in it, on it. I want you to have that mental picture, okay? Peter was being absorbed. He was going down into that sea because he took his mind off of Christ. Think about that. Here in Luke 21, Jesus says, focus on me as a title, but I, I want you to look at a couple things here. Um, in chapter 21, let's start uh, actually at verse 10. Uh, Jesus is talking and par giving parables. He's teaching by parables. And then he gets to verse 10. Jesus is still talking. Verses 10 through 19 says this. Then he continued by saying to them, nation will rise against nation. He's giving them uh, what's going to come. He's telling them, look ahead. Here's what's going to happen. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And there will be great earthquakes and in various places plagues and famines. And there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. But there, uh, but, um, before all these uh, things, they will lay their hands on you. I've always wondered who they is. 
If you ever done that, somebody said, well, they say we're supposed to wear this. Who is they? They say we're supposed to eat this. Who is they? I always wonder that. And why do they get so much influence in my life? They say you're not supposed to wear that after you're served. Who is they? They're probably like 10. So I don't know who they is. But in the scripture here, it tells us who the they is that's talking about right here. But in verse 12, it says, But before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and will persecute you, delivering you to the synagogues and prisons, bringing you before kings and governors for my name's sake. In other words, Jesus said, there's some bad things happening physically with the world. You're going to see all these things happen, plagues and earthquakes. But before this, now he's talking to his immediate audience right now in Jerusalem, okay? His immediate audience. Before all these other things, you're going to see people are going to turn you in. They're going to, they're going to tell on you. They're going to turn you into the synagogues and the prisons. And the synagogues wasn't so you could worship. It was so you could try. Verse 13, and it will lead to, and watch this, it will lead to an opportunity for your testimony. And that's a weird verse. It will lead to an opportunity for your testimony. This is like something Paul would say. When I was in prison, you know, I'm writing to encourage the church and I'm looking for an opportunity to share Christ. Jesus is talking and he says, they're going to turn you in. This is going to be really bad. However, this will give you an opportunity to share your testimony. Verse 14, so make up your minds not to prepare beforehand to defend yourselves. This is not about you, like Joe said. This is not about you. Make up your minds beforehand, not when it happens, but beforehand, that you're not going to defend yourselves. Verse 15, for I will give you utterance and wisdom which none of your opponents will be able to resist or refute. In other words, trust God, trust the Holy Spirit to give you what you need to say at the proper time. Now watch, he identifies who the they are that we mentioned earlier in 12. Right here in verse 16, he says, but you will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends and they will put some of you to death. That's a hard saying. We've talked about this a little bit about family. God ordained family, created family. He is pro-family 100%. However, God must be first. He cannot be second to family. He is first and foremost. And Jesus says, listen, people, he says, and he's talking specifically to the folks here in Jerusalem. He says, the people that turn you in are going to be the, the members of your household. Your parents, brothers, relatives, friends, and they will put some of you to death. Verse 17, and you will be hated by all on account of my name. Yet not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your lives. And that word means soul. There you gain your soul by your endurance, your perseverance, you stay in the course. Well, that's not going to happen to us. He's talking about people in Jerusalem, and that's the immediate audience. It certainly is. However, what are you going to do if it does that? I was talking to somebody the other day. We are streaming live on Facebook right now, and then it's uploaded to YouTube as well. When we start talking about the hard issues that the Scripture talks about, and some of those things bleed into our social uh, things that are that are hot topics and somebody watches Facebook doesn't agree with that at all and all of a sudden we're assigned with a hate crime or if we said something against a group of people what are we going to do then? Folks, that day has come for many, many, many congregations all over the world and it's come here. Now, what are you going to do? I don't want to wear a mask. Forget the mask. You going to jail for Christ? Are you going to stand up against your own family members and your relatives and your friends when it comes to choosing Christ over them? How deep is our faith? How deep is our faith? And who's first? I want to skip down here to verse 25. Uh, Jesus is still teaching to them. Uh, verse 20 through 24. He talks about uh, what's going to happen specifically in Jerusalem. And then it says, verse 25, and there will be signs. He's specifically talking about the return of Christ, the rapture. We talked about this Wednesday. And there will be signs and sun and moon and stars and upon the earth dismay among nations 
in perplexity at the roaring of the sea and the waves, uh, men uh, fainting uh, from fear and the expectation of the things which are coming upon the world. That is today. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud of power and great glory. We heard the song Midnight Cry. But when these things begin to take place, straighten up, lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Amen? Amen. Amen. Did you see the sky this morning? You see it? It was beautiful. The clouds, sun. I didn't see it come up. <laughs> you get up that early. But anyway, I'm trusting that it came up like it normally looks that way and looked fine this morning. You have to look up to see the sky. You have to, you have to look up sometimes. We focus so much on around what's around us. Focus on what's in this phone and the computer and what's being said. And, and y'all shoot me, but I know bars and beauty shops and churches, things spread for you. Y'all can write a book. Judy and Jimmy and y'all y'all need to write a book. I know y'all have heard things that none of us have ever heard. <laughs> so um and anybody else that does hair in here. So that's that's um you can learn a lot and you can get absorbed. Um you know what osmosis is, right? Okay, something that passed like if you throw a wet soaking a wet rag on top of a dry towel, the moisture gonna gonna seep into that towel. Folks, if you hang around people long enough that are all they talk about is what's wrong with the world, it's going to seep into you. It's going to soak into you. And then before long, that's all you're going to be talking about. It says here in verse 29, verse 29, And he told them a parable. Behold, the fig tree and all the trees, as soon as they put forth leaves, you see it and you know for yourselves that summer's now here. Even so, you too, when you see these things happening, recognize that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all things take place. The word generation here is one of those words that's hard to translate from the Greek to the English. It means race or group of people. Um, and remember, as far as I know in Scripture, there's only one race, the human race. Okay, Never seen it any other way in Scripture. And it talks about eth uh, ethnic groups, ethnos. But it, it's one human, the human race, one race of people. I told this to you last week. There's a man that started separating everybody. It didn't come from here. Uh, Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all things take place. Verse 33, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. That's God's promise. That's Jesus' promise. I'm coming back for you. My words are not going to pass away. Now, here's the warning in verse 34. Please pay attention to what verse 34 says. Here's the warning. Be on guard that your hearts may not be weighted down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of life. Okay, let's just stop right there. What in the world is dissipation? Dissipate. You, you're fairly familiar with the word dissipate. Things eke out of something into something else. Well, I want to give you the definition of the Bible when it says dissipation. It's the word asotia. Asotia is a Greek word. It's translated dissipation. It could be seen as a culture or society breaking apart into anarchy, such as rioting. How's that for time? Yeah. Dissipation. But look what the Bible says. Be on guard that your hearts may not be weighted down with dissipation. Be on guard that your heart's not consumed with dissipation and drunkenness. Be on alert. Now, this is just not talking about alcohol. It's, it's talking about being sober in your spirit, being alert, being in tune with who God is and what he's doing. And the worries of life. Don't be weighted down by the worries of life. I, I'm just, I had a bazillion questions this week. What's, what's going to happen? Except what the Bible said. What about this and what about that? I don't know except what the Bible is going to say. Okay? And if you look at this thing long enough, if you surf the web long enough, if you're on social media 24-7, you may as well just stop what you're doing, stay in bed for the rest of your life. Because it's going to weigh you down, you're going to be worried and depressed and have nothing good to think or say about anything. Folks, remember, who 
whose world is this? Whose, whose camp are we in? According to Scripture, huh? Satan. This is his domain. His job is to get you weighed down with the worries of the world, depressed, anxious, stressed. And we are doing a good job of letting him inside. Okay? Joe had a radical idea a while ago. Turn the TV off. Really? Yeah, really? Turn it off. Stop listening to it. Stop looking at the things that are getting us weighed down so heavily. Well, we're supposed to be informed. Yes, we are. We're also supposed to be in God's Word. Okay? Worship, worry of life. Don't let it weigh you down. The worries of life. And that day come on you suddenly like a trap. In other words, folks, all we have to do is get a little distracted. That's all we have to do. I tell this on my mom. Because she's not here. Okay? <laughs> I told you before. I don't know if you remember or not. We were going snow skiing one time. Me and my mom. And she was driving. And I fell asleep. And we woke up. I woke up in a different state than where we were supposed to be. And that is the truth. A different state. Not county or town. State. A different state. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't get so distracted in life that all of a sudden you wake up and you think, where in the world am I with my walk with Christ? For it will come upon all those who dwell on the face of the earth. Verse 36. But keep on the alert at all times, praying in order that you may have strength. All right? Last Sunday, what we talk about? The battle is whose? Mine? No, the battle's the Lord's, remember? The battle's the Lord's. What was that word we learned? It was a Latin word. Dominus Tobiscum? Okay, Dominus Tobiscum. It means may the Lord be with you. He is your source. He is your strength. May the Lord be with you. And we learned a Greek word Wednesday night. Y'all remember that one? A heck, deck, like a deck of cards. What's the rest of it? What is it? Oh my. Oh my. A peck, deck, oh my. But you have to say it like you have a, a bug in your throat. A peck, deck, oh my. A peck, deck, oh my. It's used seven times in the New Testament, and it means eagerly waiting. I'm eagerly waiting for what? The rapture. Each time it's used in the New Testament, it talks about the Lord coming back. I'm eagerly waiting for His coming. I'm watching. I'm staying alert. I'm not distracted with this world. So not. Be careful who and what you're following. Do some research on who or what you assign yourself to. Dr. David Jeremiah was doing a funeral years and years ago when he first got started, and he thought it was the right thing to do to eulogize the person that was being buried, and he did. And as far as he knew, this guy was a wonderful fellow. So he told everybody at the funeral how wonderful he was. Well, a few days later, the newspaper came out and talked about how much of a scoundrel this guy was, and they had found all these things in his life. And David Jeremiah said, I will never, ever do that again. Because I wasn't privy to that kind of man. I didn't know that side of him. And sometimes we align ourselves with a group or a belief or a whatever, whoever speaks the loudest or, or whoever is, is in our ear, without really doing some research or checking. And it doesn't matter who it is. If it's family or strangers or the news people or whoever, pastor, you better do some research. Find out. Uh, look, look. Be careful who you, who and what you follow. The one who does not have firm footing in God's word will fall. And that was the insinuation a while ago. You spend more time on social media or on television than you do in God's word. And that's a, that's a rhetorical question and it goes for me as well as for you. And I know the answer for myself, and I know what happens in my life when I listen to more outside of God's Word than I do what's in God's Word. 
we got to be very careful, folks. Stop saturating our minds with the worries of the world. Are there things going on that we need to be concerned about? Absolutely. Absolutely. Do we need to be active in our communities? Absolutely we do. I shared a couple weeks ago, a silent Christian is a disobedient Christian. Remember, I said work was at first, but I had to repent. A silent Christian is a disobedient Christian. We're supposed to be in the world, in the community, not of it, but in it, to be effective believers in Christ, ministering to people's needs. Um, right now, J.R. Pardue is in the community, right now, handing out God's word and talking to people about the Lord. He, he did this this week, and he was here Wednesday night, and he felt compelled to, to go out today, this morning. And that's where he is. We need to pray for him. Um, sometimes we're, we're so consumed and protective about this time and this place that we forget that we learn in here so we can be effective out there. Not just learn here so we'll have more here, but we got to put, put feet to our faith and, and be active in our world and our community. Okay? Our task is the same today as it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago. 50 years ago. It's the same exact task. Make disciples. Honor God. Love Him by making disciples. It's the same thing. Love is the thread that goes throughout Scripture. It starts in Genesis 1 and it goes through the Revelation. Love is the message. God is love. According to what's written in Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. God is love. You and I are to exude that love in the world we live in. Okay, I don't know who messed the clock up back there, but it just says it's too late. So I'm going to close. But anyway, I want you to go to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, and nobody messed with the clock. It's just, whew. Okay. Um, Philippians chapter 4, this is essential for you and for me. That's a, that's a buzzword in the last couple months. What's essential? This. Okay? Philippians 4 verses 4 through 9. Um, verses 4 through 9. Philippians 4 4 through 9. And where was Paul when he wrote this? He was in prison. Okay? Okay? Remember that. Paul's writing to encourage the church in Philippi. He says there's trials coming. You can expect it. Stand firm in your faith. And he writes this as he closes his love letter to the church of Philippi. And that's truly what it is. Verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I want to say it again to remind you and emphasize, I say rejoice. Let your forbearing spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer, and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known to God and the peace of God the peace of God which surpasses all comprehension or all understanding shall guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus finally brethren whatever is true whatever is honorable whatever is right whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is of good repute and that word means report whatever is of good report if there is any excellence, if anything worthy of praise, let your mind dwell on these things, the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Practice these things, and the God of peace shall be with you. All right? Let your mind dwell on these things, these things. You need to be informed. I need to be informed. We need to be active in our community. We also need to do some research. Indeed. One of my professors says, you'll never find gold on the surface. If you want to find gold, you've got to dig deep. And that's the truth. If you and I aren't willing to dig deep, we're not going to ever find gold. It's in God's Word. And we've got to dig to find it. Truth seems to be so hard to get a hold of these days. Because you can listen to somebody and they're talking out loud and they're just in your face and the more they say it, the more you think, that sounds, that sounds reasonable. 
You walk 10 steps and somebody else will come up to you and then they're loud and, and they're right there and you think, oh, well, that sounds good too. I mean, I'm, and they're just the opposite. Anybody can be convincing. Charismatic, just, I believe this, I'd do anything. Oh, well, that must be the right way. This is the right way. You want to know God's will? God's word is God's will. It's in here. God's will for your life and my life. It's in here. If you're not reading this, you will fall for anything. I don't care what newscast you watch or what side of the aisle you find yourself on. This is the truth. Yeah. It never changes. It's always applicable. It is always true for you and for me and for everybody else. It always has been. We can't pick and choose what's true for me or for you. That's baloney. This is true for everybody all the time. Okay? So we have to be in it. And I can tell you I have so many regrets about not spending time in God's Word when I knew that I should. And I paid the price. God's Word is our foundation, folks. Before we close, I, I want to just give you a, an admonition and a word of encouragement. First of all, the admonition. A silent Christian is a disobedient Christian. Okay? You have a voice. Use it. Amen. The admonition also goes that whatever comes out of your mouth has to be, whatever comes out of my mouth has to be covered in the Word of God and and tempered by the Holy Spirit. How many times have we had to apologize for that one? I can't take it back. I wish I could. Wipe the blood out of your lip if you have to. Make sure it comes from God's Word and it is motivated and covered by the Holy Spirit. Okay. The encouragement part is this. We sang about it. We listened to a song about it. We read scripture about it. We talked about it Wednesday night. He's coming back for his church. Okay? He's coming back for his church. And we are to eagerly wait and watch. And folks, we need to take as many people with us as possible. Tell people about Christ. Don't get caught up in the arguments of this world. That doesn't mean stay in his wall and not be good to anybody. That's not what that is at all. But don't get caught up. So you got to be this way or that way. We got to be this way. Okay? Regardless of what's going on in our world, this has to be what comes through us, through our words, through our lives, our actions, our reactions. All right, I'm done. And we're not going to sing the song and. I didn't mean to go this long, so sorry, but we need to hear this, folks. And we can't let our minds be saturated with things that aren't of God or that take us off the, the path we need to be on. And I'm going to close with a reminder of what I've already said. I want you to picture Jesus is walking on the water. The apostles are in the boat. It's at night time. It is in the middle of the night. There is a storm raging. You get that picture? Peter says, Lord, command me to come to you. Come. Peter gets out of the boat at nighttime on a stormy sea and starts walking to the Lord. And all of a sudden, he starts thinking about what's around him. There's storms going on. It's the middle of the night and the sea is, is deep and dark and he starts being consumed by the sea of humanity in our world. It's, use it as a metaphor and think about it that way. You take your eyes off of Jesus, you, we lose our focus, we will begin to be absorbed by the sea of humanity that we live in. Stand with me, please. Heavenly Father, what a privilege it is to share the Word of God. What a privilege it is to be able to read the Word of God and have it at our disposal every day, Lord. Uh, we have so many copies of it, digital and on paper and, and in any other way, Lord. Some of us, some people have scrolls still. <laughs> um, I thank you that we have your Word. 
And I thank you that we have your spirit that guides, that tempers, that convicts, that interprets. Uh, uh, I thank you, Lord, that gives us uh, conviction, unction. I pray, Lord, that you would guide us in this world. We need to have a voice. We do have a voice. It's your voice. And may it be just that, Lord, your voice. As we speak out, silently we remain disobedient. As we speak up through the guidance of your word and the filter of the Holy Spirit, Lord, we become obedient and effective. I pray, Lord, that our speech would be tempered with love and compassion. I pray that we would do some research and dig deep to find the gold in your word. Pray that your children would align with you first, period. I pray that when things come our way, trials, tribulations, things that cost us money, relationships, even our lives, that we would stand fast and make our mind up ahead of time. No matter what, no matter what, I will stand with my Lord. Father, as always, I ask you to bless these folks. As your word says in Numbers, Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. In Jesus' name.